folks. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, hope everything's uh, square on your side. If you don't see the proper images, you should be seeing right now a screen that says ESA up at the top. It has the ESA version 4 software AC verification and redesign, the opening screen. Um, and as we progress, then we'll, we've talked about those items already. And I was explaining about the AC redesign program that its main function is to show flux densities and current densities and let you compare different windings. It also allows you to take an original winding and input different voltages, speeds, um, change the power, adjust the wire sizes and make changes to the redesign over what the original one was. And we'll show you, will give you a little demo of how you do that. So that's one part of the version four software. That's the redesign part. The motor winding database side um, has a database of some 300,000 motors that have been submitted by members. Um, some decades ago, the decision was made that uh, it would be useful if members as they encountered new motor winding designs sent those in. So they've been submitting those on a card. If you look at your video there, something like this, a little, little card, various versions have been used over the years. Um, and someone here at the office has been reading those cards, typing that data into the database, and then providing that computer database to members um, on a CD or through, through some other, you know, well, uh, through floppy disks when those were still <laughs> available. Um, so through different means. Right now, it's um, incorporated with the uh, redesigned program in a single program for those who'd like. Now, the motor winding database is a, mo is a, is a uh, member benefit. There's no charge for it. it. As you join and become a member of ESA, you get that. That's yours to use. The uh, redesigned program, on the other hand, is a, is, is a program that you purchase. So if you purchase the uh, redesigned program and install it, it over rights, if you will, or takes precedence over just the motor rewind database, and then you have both of them together. Uh, the rewind database is very useful just if you have a winding that, that's questionable for some reason. It came in and you look at it and says, it doesn't look like a factory winding. Uh, this looks like somebody's rewound this and it's burned up, it's overloaded. I'm not sure that that's whoever wound this the last time. Maybe it was wound in another shop. Um, and it might not have been wound cor correctly. You can look it up in the database, see if there's other instances where someone has reported that database, or sorry, that motor into the database. Um, there are four categories of motors in the winding database. There are single phase, um, three phase, multi-speed, which are three phase motors, which are two speed or Dollander windings. And there's a section for DC motors. Okay? So you select the one of one of the four that you want, look up your particular um, winding, um, and compare what you have in your as found winding data to what's there in the database. Um, it can also be a, a great basis for doing uh, some some redesign work. If someone has a has a winding and they want to increase the power, change the speed, or make some other change, particularly to three phase uh, uh, three phase AC windings. Um, by looking in the database and comparing similar core sizes, you can see what's possible. You know, what's a, what some, someone else may have done with that core size, core being the limited factor. And if you get in a, a core which has no winding, or if uh, by chance, um, you know, someone, someone didn't record the data, you know, they've got two, they got two staters sitting there on their, uh, on their bench, and one of them's a 50, and one of them's a 60 horsepower, and they take all the data from the 60 horsepower and uh, they start to take the data on the 50 horsepower and then go to lunch and they come back afterwards and they take the data for the 60 horsepower a second time. So now I got two winding cards with 60 horsepower on them and uh, somebody discovers that when they go to rewind the data um, and you think, well, now we're in trouble. I got this 50 horsepower core and I have no idea what the data is. You can do what's called a bare core design. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you. Uh, so we use the motor winding database to do that. We're going to look up similar motors. So if, let's say, for instance, here's our nameplate data. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have the wire sizes. We don't know the number of turns. We don't know the pitch of the connection. So I'm kind of lost at this point. Um, I can use this data and put it into the, the program, into the uh, uh, redesign program 
not redesign, into the, in the motor winding database. And let's look up and see what we can find. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to get this down. Uh, no, let me leave that up there. Uh, no. We're going to go to uh, three phase winding. We're going to look up with three phase winding. There are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, you may on your on your display, you may have this opened up and then you just go to the three phase tab. Okay. Um, if this is not opened up, if it's collapsed, you can either click the little icon here on the side or you can always go to file, uh, uh, new, and uh, look up three phase that way and it'll open it. Okay. Um, so we're going to click the icon. And there's a little flashlight right here. That means look for something, find three phase motor. So we're gonna click that, okay? Um, it's always a good idea to come down here and click clear fields. That makes sure that everything is set back to zero. Now I wanna be able to see this and my data. So I'm gonna put this down a little bit smaller here. Let's just move that over. There we go. Now I can see this in my data. Let's bring up my search. And I can start putting in the information I'm looking for in the database. But what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put in the core dimensions. I'm going to put in the core length of 10, and I'm going to put in the core diameter of 7.62. So put that right here. I'm going to tell it it's in inches, tell it it's in inches, put the core length in in 10, tab over, and put the diameter in is 7.62. If I put in all of the data that's here, it will only find a motor in the database that matches all of the data. And there may not be one, there may not, so you might see no matches. So start with just the core dimensions, the bore and the length. And this key down here says get count. When I say get count, I end up with 49 motors. There are 49 motors in the database which have a, a core dimension of about 10 and a core, uh, bore diameter of about 7.62. You'll notice up here, this tolerance is set to 2%. That tolerance applies to any field which is highlighted in yellow. So this list of 49 motors um, is within 2% of being core length of 10 and bore diameter 7.62. You can change that. I could come up here and tell it, well, let's go within 5%. If I go within 5% and say get count, now I've got 315 motors that match, okay? That's a lot. That's too many to look at. I'm gonna put it back down to two and I'm gonna stick with the 49 that I started with. Okay, now that's a pretty manageable number. I can say, okay, and I can bring that list of motors up. Okay, and there's a list of motors. Now I like to get a list of motors uh, that will fit on the screen. I'm gonna drag this open here. Now I got too many motors there. They don't quite fit on the screen. I'm gonna drag this open this way. Okay, now the number of columns that are shown here um, can be changed. There's some more data that you could see in this list. I'm just going to show you this. If I right click anywhere on this screen and say select columns, there's additional information. For instance, I've, I've marked the, the frame here. Okay, so you can put up other columns here if you'd like to, uh, or you can reset it to the default. Okay, um, in any event, you know, there's 49 motors up and down here, and I think that's a little too many. I've got to scroll up and down. I can't see them all at once. Let's see if we can limit that some more. So let's click the flashlight, bring this up. I'm gonna, uh, before I do that, before I do that, I'm going to bring this back where I can see my data and then click on my flashlight. Now I can see my data and my program, okay? And we've got a stator with 48 slots. So let's put that 48 slots in here. Let's go over here to slots and let's put in 48, 48, and let's click get count. And now I have 43. So before I had 49. So six of those, six of those windings in the database didn't have 48 slots and some other number of slots. And let's say okay to that and see what we get. Uh, maximize the program. Let's just drag that open so I can see. Aha, 
Now I got I got motors that all fit on one page. That's a pretty that's a pretty good list of motors to work from. I don't really need any more. Um, one thing that I'll take a look at here. One of the key things is the air gap density. By clicking on the heading at the top of the column, it will sort by air gap density. I notice that these are some of these are horsepower and some of these are kilowatts. Um, the program is set up so that if, for instance, a motor has 37 kilowatts, which is equivalent to about 50 horsepower, it finds in the list. So you don't have to search twice for kilowatts and horsepower. I could sort by, search by horsepower and isolate those machines, which are just my 50 horsepower ones that I'm looking for. So there's some 60s and some others in here as well. Um, I could sort by air gap density. I could sort by voltage or any column that I want to. Um, as I'm looking down this air gap density, I notice there's quite a few machines here, quite a few motors here that have the same air gap density. And I also noticed that most of those are Baldor motors. And it seems to me, if I looked at my data, yes, it is. My motor is a Baldor motor. So why don't I limit this further? And since I got lots of Baldor motors in there, let's click my flashlight. And now let's say I only want Baldor motors. Let's put in B-A-L, click the drop down. There it is, Baldor. Click get count. Ah, 15 of those motors were Baldors. Since I'm looking for a Baldor, let's just limit it to that, get count. Okay. Maximize the program. All right, so now I got motors, which are just Baldor motors. And interesting, um, as I look at these, I look down the air gap density, there's a whole bunch of them that are all virtually identical motors. What that means is that same turns, same pitch, same air gap density. Over decades or years, uh, a lot of members have submitted this data, they've encountered it. Apparently it's a pretty popular motor out there that's in the marketplace. So we've got a lot of hits on it and that's pretty confident there that this is probably the factory winding. I got two windings down here at the bottom that have a little bit higher flux density and they're wound as lap windings where these are as concentric windings. If it has a single pitch, one and 11, it's a lap winding. If it has multiple pitches, it's a concentric winding. So it's pretty certain here that these are factory windings and these are redesigns that some uh, other shop has done and then has been uh, uh, failed and come back in for rewind again. So I'm pretty confident I can take any of these motors and pick one of them and have a factory winding. Let's just take one out of the middle here. Um, double click it and it opens up in the editor and there's all my data. So my bare core with a length of 10 inches and a bore of 7.62 matches perfectly with this Baldor motor from the, from the database. And whoo, somebody messed up and didn't take the data on that winding, but we're okay. We found it in the database. Now I've got data to go with. I could take this data and enter it into the redesign program um, and use it for my starting of my redesign and then redesign it to lap. We've included a feature since this is in the same interface where instead of entering it manually, going up and entering a new motor in a redesign, I can go to the motor DB tab and click send to ACR, send to ACR. When I click send to ACR, it starts the process for creating a new motor in the redesign program. We're in the database. It's going to create a new motor. I'm call this motor my demo. And let's look up a manufacturer and say finish. And now what it's done is it's taken that data and look up two tabs. One of them is the one I looked up in the motor winding database. The other one is the new redesign that I've just created or the program has created for me and all the data has been entered in, I don't have to enter the data, okay? Two pieces of information that weren't included in the database are the back iron. So we need to put in the back iron from our data and we need to put in the tooth width from our data, okay? 
That's our back iron and our tooth width, okay, from our data. Put it in there. Um, and now I'm ready to go. And now all I have to do is click uh, to lap right there. Click the calculate button and it'll get, bring up the grid. Now, incidentally, this calculate button right here that brings up the grid and this icon with the black circle and an arrow do exactly the same thing. Notice things says calculate. So I click calculate and it brings up a grid of possible redesigns, okay? I forgot something, no problem. I'll go back and do it, cancel. Let's go back to the data. Oh no, that's on the next one. That's on the next one. So I hit calculate. Um, and I've got a whole bunch of, of options that I can select from. The program has selected this one. It has done that because this percentage is the lowest percentage in the list. All that means is that this particular selection, a pitch of one and nine with 14 turns and a two delta connection, would give you the winding that would be closest to the uh, effective turns of the original winding, which means that the air gap density is gonna be as close as or to the original winding. That may not be your best option. We'll talk about that some more. In fact, um, we'll click this one, but I'd also like to take a look at this winding up here. So I'm gonna hold down the control key and I'm gonna click this winding. I've got two windings now, uh, two potential redesigns clicked. I like this one because it has fewer turns. If it has fewer turns, I'm gonna be able to use larger wire. If I use larger wire, I'm going to have less resistance and the motor will probably run a little bit cooler. That might be a better redesign. Okay, so I'll click OK. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, I now have three tabs for this winding. This is my original. I have the original data. I have a rewind option one and a rewind option two. Okay, rewind option one is 12 turns, pitch of one and 12, rewind option two, 14 turns, pitch of one and nine, okay? Um, of the two, one key factor is going to be the circular mills per amp. Circular mills per amp tells me how much wire I've got to carry the current, okay? So this one is 492. The other option is 567. So more circular mills per amp is, a, is an advantage. You got more wire there to carry the current, so you're gonna generate less heat. Of the two, I probably would select this one. There were other options in the, um, in the grid. I can click that little icon up here at the top, bring my grid back up. I may think, you know, what about this one? That's got that 0 0.966, which is kind of a sweet, you know, chord factor. Uh, what would that look like? And say, okay. And now I have redesign option number three down here, okay? Um, got, some, uh, got some problems with it. It looks like it's gonna be pretty far away. That's gonna take my 50 horsepower motor and turn it into a 46 horsepower motor. That may not be the best option. I now have three options that I can compare, okay? Um, so that's how you can take data for a winding a bare core had no idea what the winding would have been, looked up in the database and found one that came pretty close to matching. In fact, we think this might be a factory winding, okay? Chose that one and displayed it, then went to send to ACR and it created a new winding over in um, ACR and I was able to look at it, compare the flux densities, look at different options and decide what I wanna do to wind this as a lap winding instead of as a concentric winding. Okay, questions on that? That's a bare core design. Okay, I got a bunch of questions. I should have been watching. Let's see. I can see both screens. It's working. Okay, those are all pre questions. I have a question here. A person's asked Does ESA confirm uh, member submitted data? Um, I'm, I'm not certain what you mean by confirm. We don't reply to you and confirm that we've received it. That doesn't happen. Um, we do verify it. 
um, it goes through a filter and um, if it doesn't meet certain criteria, search criteria, then um, um, it doesn't it doesn't get uh, doesn't get put in the database. So um, put that up here. There's my presentation. There it is. Okay. So if that's what you're talking about, incidentally, I'm going to answer your question a little further here. Um, that. BearCore redesign example I just showed you is available in a video tutorial. Um, if you look at your paperwork that came with it, that you've got this, um, you've got this URL here. You can click on that, and it'll take you to if you want. It said, "Man, he went through that too quick. I want to see it myself." You can go through that video slow anytime you'd like to. Um, so, if what you're asking is, we do, do we check the data to confirm that the data is good data? Yes, we do. Um, for single phase DC and multi speed. Uh, those are submitted on a paper paper winding card. Um, um, one of our ESA members, uh, one of our technical staff here, looked that over and they manually enter that and they check it to make sure that it's correct. If they see something that's bogus, that does not go in the database. Okay, if it's an AC three phase winding, um, let me get my uh, laser pointer here. If it's a three phase winding that comes in electronically or on paper, either way, when it's entered. Um, that data is reviewed by an ESA technical specialist to make sure that it's correct, and it goes through some electronic screening to make sure that it meets the acceptable criteria before it goes in the database. So if your question was, do we confirm the data is correct? Yes, we do. Uh, do we confirm that we've received it? No, you won't get anything back that says, hey, thanks, we got it. But we do say thank you. We do want you to support, support uh, submit the data. Um, is most of the voltage is 230 and 460? And look through the database, yes, absolutely. Most of the data in the three phase um, winding database is, is 230, 460. There's a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, 50 hertz uh, voltages. There's some high voltages in there. You know what? We could answer that question, and you can answer that question yourself because you have the program. Let's go back to, uh, let's go back to the program. Let's go over to three phase. Let's do a search. Let's clear all fields. Let's go to the voltage field. And let's put in, for instance, 575. That's kind of an odd one, get count. Uh, there are 8,587 motors in there at 575 volts. How about uh, 4160? At 4160, there's only 749 volts at 4160. 13,800. Four, there are four high voltage motors in there. Um, 230 volts. Yeah, there's a bunch, 64,000 of them, okay? so. Take your program and um, um, go through it, and you can you can pull up any voltage uh, that you'd like and see how many are in there. Let's see. We're 600 in Canada. I don't understand that question. Um, we're 600 in Canada. Uh, if you could re-ask that question, uh, Justin, we're 600 of what in Canada? Oh, 600 of those. Uh, of 575 volts? Oh, yeah, probably, probably, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, very good, so we've answered a few questions there. Good questions, thank you. Um, let's see. Um, so that's what we do with the data that comes in, and um, um, they have been submitted on these paper winding cards, but now we can submit them electronically for anyone who has the redesign program. If you have the redesign program and you're, you're entering data into it, instead of fin filling out a, you know, a paper winding card and sending that in, um, we have this ability to send to ESA. Whenever you create a new motor or if you open up an existing motor, on the original data screen right here at the top is this check off. You can see that on the program. If I go to the original data screen, is right there. 
There's the send to ease of check off. Take the check off and it won't be sent electronically. Put the check on. And if, depending on how you set your program up, it will be sent electronically whenever that is triggered. Okay. Um, how often that data gets sent to ESA is determined uh, by one of the settings in the preferences. So on your program, you've got a tools menu and you've got preferences and you can set the, the uh, prompt for sending to ESA to either manual or prompted or automatic. Uh, if it's set to prompted or automatic, then periodically, every 30 days or so, or every like, motors, things set for 30 motors, 30 new windings that you've entered, it will automatically pop up and ask you to confirm to send to ESA. Uh, if you set it to manual, it won't do that. It won't, it won't automatically come up and say, do you want to send this data to ESA? It will only do that then if it's set to manual. Um, when you go to tools, send to ESA. So if it's sent to automatic or prompted, it'll pop up and tell you, hey, you got these motors in here, do you want to send them to ESA? If it's set to manual, you'll manually have to go into tools, send to ESA, and then what it will do is it'll pop up this screen. Um, it'll list all of the Windings that you've you've put in put into your uh, uh, into your database. There'll be a check mark for send to ESA that has been set uh, when you enter the motor. You either clicked it or you unclicked it. It'll be clicked or unclicked, and you can override that here. So you can just look, scroll down through your list, and see if how many you're sending. If a winding has already been sent, it will be marked sent. Okay, so you don't have to worry about resending the same winding again. All right. So there's the send to ESA screen that comes up. And then once you click send, it will either send it over the internet if you have an internet connection, or if you don't have an internet connection, if that computer is not connected to uh, the internet, then this will be clicked and it will save it to a file. There'll be a little dialogue that'll pop up and say, here's the file that was just written and its location. And you can take that file and email it to us and we'll include it that way. So if you don't have an internet connection on the computer running this software, um, you can still submit it through a file by emailing it. Any questions on that? Okay. Let's um, let's take a look at the um, let's take a look at the ACR program. I showed it to you briefly before. Um, we'll take a look at it again here. Um, the process is to enter the original data. And then you're going to verify uh, the flux densities or redesign it. Um, so one or the other, depending on the situation, I'll show you both of them. Okay, verify just displays the density data. Redesign provides that grid where you can pick off the particular machine that you'd like. You can evaluate the redesign options. I'll show you a couple of a couple more a uh, couple of more options for choosing which one you want. Um, and then the original data will be available for the send to ESA function. So here's some data. Um, I've got a five horsepower, two pole, 60 hertz motor, um, pretty standard one. And it came in 230 volts and we're gonna redesign it for 575 volts. So let me show you this on the program. There's my program. Uh, this icon right up here at the top will create a new motor. Uh, I can also go to file, new, whoops, file, new, motor, same thing, same icon. So let's create a new motor. And it starts a little wizard that will ask me some questions and wants a job number. Let's put in my ACR demo, put a company in it. There's a company database that you can put your customers in. And the manufacturer, let's call it an it's. Okay. And it creates a new motor. Notice I have three tabs up here at the top. These two are from the previous demo. There's the one we looked up in the database. There's the redesign we did from the one that we looked up in the database. And here's my new one. You can put lots of these in here. So if you're a multitasker and you got a lot of things going on, the program will accommodate doing two or three things that you, you know, at once if you want it to. So we'll put our data in. Um, I have the data on another screen so I can see it. It's a, oh, incidentally, we're gonna set this for horsepower. Set this for horsepower, because it's horsepower, not kilowatts. Put it in right here, it's 50 horsepower. It's a two pole. It's a 48 slot. 
no, 36 slot. This is a 36 slot stator, 60 hertz. This is a 2Y connection. I'm using the tab key to go from field to field. And I use the space key to set check marks. So I'm hitting a space bar here to set that to a 2Y. It is a 230 volt. It's 12.2 amps. The wire is AWG. Uh, we got wire sizes could be AWG metric, could be uh, square wire, round uh, square wire, rectangular wire, metric, anything you'd like. We have a single wire size. It's two number 21s, and it is a concentric winding. I uh, I know it's a concentric winding because it has multiple pitches, 14, 16, 18. That's a concentric winding, okay? 18 coils in this, so it's a full slot winding. If I have a two pole winding with 18 coils and three phases, that means I have to have six groups of three. Program figures it out for us and provides the three fields to input the three winding, uh, three coil winding data. So it's 26 turns, 26 turns, 26 turns. It's 18, sorry, 14, 16, 18 for the pitch. We're going to put that in. 26 turns, 14, 26 turns. It automatically increments up by two and 26 turns. I'll come over to my core dimensions. They're in inches. Okay, we're going to use tooth dimensions rather than slot dimensions. And I'm putting my core length. My core length is 6.5. My bore diameter is 4.5. My core length is 1.125, and my tooth width is 0 0.181. So all my data is in there. At this point, all I need to do is tell it what I want to do with the new winding, and that's done over here um, in the redesign section. And I'm going to change the voltage, check voltage, from 230 to 575. Okay? Now, I could, if I wanted to, come down here and click verification only and click calculate. And rather than give me a new winding with 575 volts, it will take the existing winding and uh, just show me the densities. So right up here are the densities. You'll notice down here at the bottom, there's my original tab. It has all my original data. And when I click verification only calculated, it created a new tab down here, verification. Okay, verification. And there's my densities. There's my air gap density, tooth, core, and my circular mills per amp. So I have my flux densities, my current densities. Just check to see what they are. Okay, I'll go back to my original tab down here at the bottom. And instead of doing a verification, now I'll do a redesign to lap. Okay, and that's where this 575 volts is going to come in. It's going to give me a redesign to a lap winding for 575 volts. Click calculate. And here's my grid. Okay. With all the options on it. Um, you'll notice that all of, the, um, all of the connections are two circuit connections. And you notice the original was two circuits. And right up here at the top, you see this, this check mark for original. It defaults to the original connection number of circuits, but I can choose anything I want. I could choose one, two, four. It will only display legal um, options up here. If it's a six pole, you'll have a three. There's no three circuits for a four pole motor, so it doesn't show up. I could click all and see all the options. Now I notice I have one circuit, a whole bunch of two circuits, and I have four circuits, okay? I'll go back to the original and it'll limit it to just the two circuits. You'll notice that the, the program has selected this row, um, a pitch of one and 13 with 65 turns. And it's done that because this is, it matches perfectly with the original winding. Um, since it matches original, but, 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 but that may not be the best winding. Um, we might want to look at some other criteria. For instance, if I put 65 turns in the slot, uh, that takes a certain amount of wire. There's other options up here. 
uh, for instance, we'll take, I'm gonna hold down the control key and click this top row, okay? This one will only have 57 turns. Well, if I put 57 turns in the slot instead of 65 turns in the slot, I can use bigger wire. Bigger wire would be less resistance. That would be an advantage, okay? I might say, you know, I've a, had a two Y connection going to 575 volts, my volts per coil goes up. That's why I'd use a red over here. I might wanna choose a winding that had a Y connection instead of a uh, um, delta connection. So I might wanna take a look at this winding right here, okay? So I have highlight, I've, with the control key, I've got three different potential windings from the grid selected, and I'll say, okay. And if you look down here at the bottom, what it's gonna do down here, it's gonna create three new tabs, one for each of those redesigns. There they are. Redesign option one, redesign option two, redesign option three, okay? And now I can compare the results of those and think, well, this one's got pretty good circular mills per amp. This one doesn't have such good circular mills per amp. And in fact, it's given me a warning that says, hey, your circular mills per amp are below 250. So this one's given me a warning. Both of these windings have high volts per coil, which is okay. I can put some additional phase paper in. Or this one doesn't have any problems with it. So you can choose which of these you'd like. Click tab to tab, look at what you've got. We've in also included another option here. When you've got several redesign options and you want to compare them, come up here to the top. Go to the, uh, go to the editor, okay? Click the editor tab. Whoops, wrong one. Click the redesign tab, there it is. And down here you'll see side by side, okay? Click side by side and it brings them up in a calmer fashion. So I can look right across, there's your circular mills per amp. There's your circuit, 273 versus 227 versus 262. This one's got the best circular mills per amp, but if I look at volts per coil, the volts per coil are high, volts per coil are high, volts per coil are low. Those are just a couple of the considerations I might want to take a look at. So this, this might be the winding that I want over here. I might want to change that to a, to a, to a 2Y, get my volts per coil down. It's still got plenty of circular mills per amp, not quite as good as the original, just real close to the original. So uh, this might be the best winding, this redesign option three, okay? At this point, um, if I look at my original tab down here at the bottom, original tab. Here's your send to ESA. Here's your send to ESA. If this is a new winding I've looked at, and I'm, it looks like a, like a factory winding, I wanna send that to, we, I would fill out this card and I would send this card into uh, ESA. All I have to do is leave that checked right there Leave that checked right there, and it'll be in the list. And when the send ESA uh, function comes up, it will be sent. Only the original data, only the original data is used um, or input into the database when it's sent to ESA. You might want, just to just give you a hint here, coming down to the bottom, I want to save this. Here's my save icon up here, a little diskette. That'll save this in my database. Before I save it, I might choose, you know, this, this winding three, this redesign option three, that's the one that I want. Let's take this winding two and let's come up here and let's say, remove that redesign. And let's get rid of this winding one as well. Let's say, remove that redesign. And just to make it cleaner, here's a verification. Let's take that verification off of there, remove that one. Now the only tabs are the original and the actual option that I'm gonna choose to redesign, re rewind this motor to. And I'm gonna click save right here. And now I have a record in my database of that motor. And I wanna come back here in six months or a year and say, well, what do we do with that? That motor might be closed. Let's go, I'm gonna click, see this gray space right here? I'm gonna click there. And it's gonna say, close that one, close the others. I'm gonna say, close all of them. Clear it out of there. Don't even save that one, all gone. What was that winding that we did for those folks way back when? Well, here it is. Open it up and there it is, original, and there it is, the redesign. So I've got a record of what I actually did if you take the time to close any other options that you didn't use, okay? All right, let's wrap this up. So there's a little demo on how to input and do a redesign and walk your way through it. Um, the, uh, uh, 
that demo is available in a video on our um, on our website. Uh, there's the URL. It's there. And also, if you if if you, you just go to the website, um, you can find it there as well. Um, this is this is here. It is on the website. There's the video for the intro. There's a nice video for the grid to show you how to use the grid. There were some options there. We just didn't have the time to go over right now. Um, here's your bare core design. So those videos are available online with the uh, ESA website. You can also get to them from the program. If you go to the program, help, tutorials and facts right there. That'll also take you to those, uh, those links, okay? All right. Um, some, some folks use the program a little differently, and that's one of the reasons we've included this send to ESA. Um, what some folks have been doing, because I get the data back and I look through the data and I, and I see some things and I think, how did that happen? Um, some folks have taken and they've re-entered the original data. They'll take the original data, they'll enter it, and they'll do a verification. And they'll say, okay, I see my flux densities, but what if I did this? What if I shortened the pitch and added some turns, okay? And they'll re-enter the original data and they'll do another verification. And they might do that three, four, five. I've seen some data come back in that had eight, 10, 12 versions of the same, uh, the same winding with just little tweaks. And I don't have any way to know which one's the original. So I have to take that data and throw all that data out. So it'll help the quality of the submission of the data. And you do that if you want. I mean, the program's not designed to use it that way, but hey, it works. Um, um, if when you do that, or if you if you put maybe you just put some data in, I want to wonder what would happen if we wound a data wound a stator this way, and you put the data in, um, unclick this send to ESA, unclick this send to ESA, so that data doesn't come in here, and it will help uh, the process for getting new motors into the database. We want to continue to grow the um, we want to continue to grow the uh, uh, the database. Um, there are new manufacturers out there, and uh, so if we don't continue to, with our members submitting data, those are not going to be in the database. There's new efficiency standards that have, you know, windings are changing. Um, and don't worry about if hey, the motor's already probably been sent in. I, you know, I know we've encountered it before. When you get multiple submissions of the same winding, uh, that confirms to the person looking it up in the database that, hey, you know, I've three or four different people or the same person three or four different times has encountered this winding, um, it must be, it very likely is a, is a factory winding, okay? But use that send to ESA checkoff. A couple of other things on the, on the uh, program. Um, that grid, learn to use that grid. It's, it's very helpful. Um, it prevents errors because it only shows you the, what's legal. Um, and you've got a good comparison there of the different flux densities immediately available. Uh, you can sort that that grid by columns to go to that tutorial and it shows you more about that on the grid. There's some good things you can do with that. Um, the side to side display helps a lot, and then you can actually document you know the redesign. Additional features in the program. If I had more time, I'd love to go through and show it to you. Incidentally, um, talking about more time. If you make it to uh, to Las Vegas to the convention this year, I'll be doing a session on the redesign program. We'll have more time and go into more details, show you some of the ins and outs of it. So, uh, um, if you can make it to uh, to the convention in East at, at, at uh, Las Vegas, then uh, uh, look that one up. That'll be a Saturday session, I believe. Okay, there's a wire size calculator in there. Sometimes you know you just don't have you know those wires. You don't have enough in hand, and you need to change them. Um, or you won't, they're just too tight in the slot and you want to change that. I've, I've had more time, I'd show you that's a great little feature. Uh, do power, frequency, speed changes, voltage changes. It'll in, let you take metric or US units in either way. Um, it will let you do multi-speed redesigns. So if I'm redesigning a, a motor and I want to make it a Dollander winding, I can come over here and click this, um, click this, Remove all rewinds. I can click this over here too, and I can do a constant torque, constant uh, uh, variable torque or constant horsepower redesign with this and um, calculate and it'll give you the options for that. So if I'm doing a two speed rewind on a single winding, um, it's got that capability as well. This set available wire sizes is a very neat feature. 
Um, some people haven't found that one yet. It's on tools, set available wire sizes. So if you don't have half sizes, um, you can come in here and, uh, and tell it you don't have those half sizes, just uncheck those check the ones you do have. And when you do a redesign, it'll go to this list and it'll only pick wire sizes that you have in stock. So that's a very nice feature that's been installed in there. Uh, and take a look at the tutorials. Okay, let's see, I got a string of questions here. Um, is there data for wound rotors? No, there's no data in there for wound rotors. These are for stators only. Um, if you'll talk with uh, uh, Chuck or Tom or Mike, um, they can show you how to use the program to evaluate a wound rotor, the ACR program, the redesign program. But as far as being in the database, um, I don't believe there's any rotor data in there. I believe it is all stator database. Um, if the densities are in red, are they still okay to wind? What is acceptable? What's acceptable in the program, if I go to tools, tolerances, um, and these are the maximums that are set in, okay? You can edit these, um, but the alarms are set on the factory uh, levels. Whether or not a particular winding can accommodate uh, 65,000 lines of flux depends a lot on the type of core material. Um, if it'll take more than that or not, if you've got a really good solid core and it's got some really good iron in it that the manufacturer put in for a premium motor, you might be able to push that a little bit. That 65,000 air gap or tooth density. The air gap is the one that we, we generally look at. Um, so um, uh, the air gap densities, uh, the pretty solid against 65, if it's 1,000. If you go much above that, you're gonna get your core into saturation unless it's just a really good solid core. If your core is not in very good shape, you might not get 65,000 lines of, 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 of uh, flux density out of it. So the variable is the core and the core material. And it varies from manufacturers and it varies by the age of the motor and when it was made and and uh, how the how the uh, how the core has been treated uh, in terms of um, uh, what someone might have done to it in removing a previous winding. So um, I believe uh, you know uh, uh, that question. If you'll submit that question um, um, separately in an email, uh, we can probably refer you. I can't do it right here, but I can probably refer you to some technical papers that have been written on it. They're available through the East website. Um, you have 50 horsepower in not five horsepower. Oh, I re-entered it wrong. Oh no, this is, uh, oh I do, don't I? That's a typo. <laughs> That's a typo. Um, this right here is 50. I input it as 50. I was cranking through there too quickly. So that should have been five. That should have been five. Okay. All right. Um, the, uh, the flux densities that the program calculates, verification, the flux densities that it calculates have nothing to do with the input for horsepower. Uh, that's just, uh, that's the nameplate value, if you will. And if you're interested in how that works, I, I would suggest if you go to the reference tab and you look at the version two AC redesign book, Okay. Included with the program is this PDF of the redesigned book, and it has all the formulas in there. If you go to the master formula, if you go to the master formula, number nine, page 29. Where do we get to it? There we are, the master formula. Okay, uh, these are the inputs, okay? Um, and if you wanna change the horsepower, uh, you can change the horsepower there. Uh, for flux densities, that's, that's okay, that's the master formula. There's a formula in here for calculating the flux densities. And if you look that up, you'll see that horsepower is not one of the components in it. Determining flux densities, probably on page 89, they're strengthening and weakening a motor. 
that's where the flux densities would be. Could be some other places. Um, so yep, I input the horsepower wrong. Um, how can you get 50 horsepower to a five horsepower motor? Hopefully I've answered that. Um, what I put in for here, that the program does something relative. It says, if you start with this data, we can change it to that. But the horsepower entry does not affect the flux densities, okay? What is the cost of the program? Um, the program is about, uh, it's under $500 for something. If you already have a previous copy, uh, you can upgrade from version two that you might have purchased a decade ago um, at a reduced price, which I be, believe is about $300. So three to $500 in that price range. Um, I'd, I'd look it up and get it exact, um, but you can get that from customer service or you can just go to the website and um, it'll be on the uh, product page for that. How can I find winding data by using the nameplate data? Find winding data. The question is, how do I find winding data using the nameplate data? You click the three phase, if it's a three phase motor, you click the three phase icon, you click the flashlight, you hit clear all fields, you start with something clear, and you input uh, data. I suggest if you want to find data, for nameplate data. That means you don't have the core dimensions if you just have nameplate. Um, I suggest that you use the power, the poles, um, and the slots. Well, you wouldn't have slots. So the power and the poles and the manufacturer. Start with the least amount of data that you can put in. So let's put in 50 horsepower. I would not suggest putting in RPM. Put in poles, four pole. Um, do a get count, see how many you got. Okay, that's way too many. The next, whoops, sorry, wrong button. The next criteria, I've got 50 horsepower. I've got four pole. Uh, I might put in a frame size and see if I could find a frame size or I might put in a manufacturer um, next. Um, so if this is a uh, GE motor, General Electric, okay. We do cross references, so General Electric will pull up GE and General Electric, and we, we change the name when it's put in there, so it's, so it's, so it's consistent. Do a get count. Well, 1,294, that's still pretty many, okay? So I might wanna go with a frame size. Uh, how about a 254 frame? Get count. None of them in a 254. Uh, I got that wrong, four. I got the frame size wrong, get count. Not gonna find that, okay? But look, for, look for a suitable, f uh, what, was my, what was my frame? What my frame size here? Give me just a second. What was the frame size on that 50 horsepower? We're getting a little bit past time here, so um, I'm trying to work pretty quick. That 50 horsepower was, there it is, 50 horsepower, Frame size, type, duty, stator slots. Hmm, I gotta have a frame size on there someplace. I know it's on there. Type frame. Oh, it's an old frame size, 5508. That's an old frame size. Not gonna find any of those. Nope, that's not there either. Okay, so so start with, here's the key. The key is start with the least amount of data and do a get count, see how many are there, and start narrowing it down, okay? Um, from the nameplate, uh, you could put voltage in. Um, I don't like to use voltage because if I put in 460, I'm not gonna get motors um, that have 230 volts. And whether it's 230 or 460 really doesn't make any difference. Okay, so there's only 110 of those. I could search for, for 460 and then I could search for 230, 110 of those, and 513 of those. So combined together, I got 623 of them. And you know, look for it that way. Um, so volt, uh, voltage range or volts, that's kind of a tricky one to, to, you know, to find the motors you're looking for. I hope that answered your question. 
Should the program not realize the core length and diameter is wrong for a 50 horsepower motor as entered? No, the program does not do that. Um, that's an interesting point. Um, the program is a redesigned program. It, it does not, it takes, the, it takes whatever you put in and scales the output according to that master formula that I showed you in the, uh, that I showed you in the book. Okay? It does not go in and evaluate all the data and see if it's correct or not. It simply takes your input and scales the output based on the changes. So what it's doing here is it's taking this 230 volt input and it's scaling the output to 575 volts. So based on that master formula, and it's not a direct proportion, there's some square roots and you know, some, some exponential factors in there, it scales the output. That's, that's important to remember. Um, it does have some safety features built into it. It won't let you put in, for instance, three circuits on a four pole motor. Um, so it has, it has some things like that that it watches for. And of course it checks, it checks flux density, but flux density is not based on horsepower. Flux density is based on voltage, uh, turns, pitch, and core dimensions. And when you look at the formula for how you calculate uh, flux density, the horsepower isn't there. The horsepower is not part of it. So good question, good question. Thank you all, ran a little bit over here, had some great questions, and um, there'll, be a, um, there'll be a survey coming to you in uh, an email. Please take and fill that out and send it back to us. We'd like to keep track of how we're doing. The next webinar is a week from today, January 30th. Um, it's another freebie. Uh, learn to improve your shop efficiency and production. Mike Howell will be doing that one. Thank you, folks. Have a wonderful afternoon.